You know, I didn't realize that I was gonna evolve into such a homebody. But I mean, you know, as a kid, I was a bit of a wild, uh, a wild horse. You know, I, I was hard to rein in. Uh, I never wanted to be in the same place twice, which is really why I gravitated towards real estate. There's never a dull moment in the real estate market. But um, as it relates to home, I really didn't find that piece of my uh, spirit, if you will, until Joe and I met and obviously started a home of our own. And, and now when I think about the kids and the farm and the animals, I mean, it's like there's no place on earth that I'd rather be, which is why real estate is so important to us. What I love about it is it started off as a job for us. And then as we started meeting these families and then we'd hand them the keys and see, oh, this is, this is life changing for these people. This is now gonna be part of their story, this home, the memories they make there. And so once we started getting into that, it really became something we became passionate about. And we truly believe that home is the most important place on earth. When designing the living room for the Ferguson family, I created the open concept that they asked for and made distinctive cosmetic updates to the room so it matched their style and their needs. So originally in the space, there were really thin columns and then just some white railing. And I really wanted to beef the columns up, make them more substantial, a little more formal. So we removed the railing altogether to really open up the space and then trimmed out the existing columns. This originally, was a set of French doors that led out to the sunroom. Now we've created this double-sided fireplace, put some really pretty quartzite here, and then did a really pretty trim around it to make it have a clean but pretty elegant look. Over here with the stairs, you know, they had the dated railing, so we removed the existing railing. We just came back with a really clean, simple railing, but I just think the blend of the white, the natural, really pretty wood mixed with the gray trim you know, it ties in now to the updates of the house. For the Childers family, downsizing to a smaller home was a chance to clear the clutter and refresh their setting. As for Stacy, she wanted charm, she wanted character, but she also wanted simplicity. My favorite thing about this kitchen is the backsplash. My client loved blue and white, so we found this really fun handmade tile that I think really just sets the stage for this kitchen. I tried to keep everything else very simple so it wasn't overwhelming for her. You know, a lot of people when they're designing their kitchen don't consider open shelving. I think a lot of people are intimidated by it. They wonder, is it gonna make my kitchen seem cluttered? What I love about open shelving is it really gives the kitchen this feel of just an open, airy space. And what I do is keep it very simple. The key is grouping things together, not doing too much color if you have a great backsplash. But if you happen to have a more simple backsplash or no backsplash at all, this is not expensive at all. When designing with the coastal theme for the Armoyan project, I didn't want to go too literal with it. So I used simple, thoughtful details to tie it all together and keep the design relaxed and calming, not overwhelming. I really love how quaint and cozy it is in here. The color on the walls I decided to use was a lighter blue gray tone, but it still has that fresh, clean way about it. When you're trying to carry on a theme, you can keep it subtle. We have the sand and these really cool hurricane jars. Fun little glass things with seashells. My client loves shells. The lamps with the rope, but also this driftwood that we found um, here in Waco. It's stuff like this that I think even though we're in Texas, you can still have what you want. Let's check out the master bathroom. I really like this bathroom because it's not overbearing. There's a lot of texture going on and a lot of dimension, but it's not too much. I love these fun pendant lights that we chose, these rotating mirrors. We use a really light palette in here, softer gray on the floor. One of the things I love the most in this bathroom is this new shower that we got for our clients. We've got this really cool basket weave on the wall and then we have these fun pebbles on the floor. We've made their shower twice as big, but with this glass and all this texture, I just really feel like it makes a huge statement in this bathroom. The Downs really wanted an open and welcoming entry. Sometimes in these older homes, there's interesting obstacles you have to overcome. One of the biggest challenges with this project was the layout of this house. Originally, when you walked in, there was a huge fireplace right here in the middle, but you couldn't see the rest of the house. My clients really wanted an open feel. They wanted it light and airy in here, but with that brick structure that was really messing up the flow. So we played around with the design and the layout of this house, and I thought to make a grander entry, it would be really cool to do his or her offices in the front of the house rather than in the back. So as you can see here, I've got her office here. 
But again, all the same trim work is happening, so there's a really great deal of balance. And then you've got this really pretty light fixture up here that just sets the stage, and it really feels warm and inviting. But now you're not walking into a huge structure that's blocking the view. This shotgun house was honestly one of our favorite projects to work on. There were a ton of challenges. This house was 700 square feet, very tiny space. And even though the footprint of the house is still the same, it feels so much bigger now that we've opened up the space, removed the walls, the ceilings go over 20 feet tall. Right when you walk in, you see this amazing oversized fan. You also see all these really pretty wood windows that start at the floor that go all the way up, so it has a really dramatic look. There's so many unique things to take in. I think that's why we really love this project. Let's go check out the kitchen. In here, we've got a really tight space to work with, but I really wanted to maximize as much of the square footage as we could. There really wasn't any room for a dining table in this space, so I had to think through every design element in the kitchen. I wanted to incorporate this oversized island so you had plenty of bar seats here so they could eat here in the kitchen. Now you've got this kitchen, you've got this amazing living space over here, but it's all open. You know, I try to design my clients' homes to be a reflection of their style and personality. When you're designing for two people with very different tastes, as in the case of the whites, it can get a little tricky. I would say the entryway was the most challenging part in this house because I really wanted them to walk in and feel like it was reflective of both of them. So I needed to blend both of their styles, traditional style with rustic style. I added this chair wheel here that has a, a traditional look, but it's not too formal, very simple. It adds some texture to the space, but it also really makes it feel warm and inviting when you walk in. It's nice because the walls don't feel so flat, but it's still at a space where you feel like it draws the walls out, but you still have room for artwork. But my favorite thing about this entryway is definitely the stairwell. The original stairwell was really dated. It was almost too traditional. So we ripped it all out and I designed this new stairwell that I just feel like has a little bit of a modern flair to it. It's super unique. And I just think it really sets the tone right when you walk in. The kitchen is the heart of the home and often serves many purposes for a young family. When designing this kitchen for the Fergusons, I wanted to create a space that was both beautiful and functional for the day-to-day. -day. And so I really wanted to create a nice flow in here. I wanted to design two cabinets in the kitchen that are almost like a hutch. She collects really pretty dishes and I know with anyone that collects dishes, they want to display them, so I wanted to incorporate that in the kitchen design, and I think this is really elegant, it's pretty, it's simple, but her china and her dishes still really pop. You know, I think a lot of people get scared at the idea of mixing metals in the kitchen, so just have fun with it. It's really finding pieces you love and implementing them in your home. A fun design element that we incorporated in this modern project were these really simple boxes. What I feel like makes this modern is it's very clean line, it's simple, it's pretty raw, and what I like about it is just the balance of it with the plaster behind it. You can really incorporate this look anywhere, whether it be the living room in this space, for instance, or a kid's bedroom, a playroom. You can think through this on a lot of different levels, even a mudroom, great for storage, but it also can highlight any of your favorite art pieces, your favorite books, so it really can go a long way. What's great about it for any space that you've got, whether you're modern, traditional, or rustic, you can change the idea of these boxes. Keep the concept the same, but change it whether you use reclaimed wood, slatted wood. What's great about this entire concept is you don't have to spend $1,500 on a piece of furniture. This all costs about $150, and it's unique. And as time goes on, you can add to it, take away, modify it. But I think it's interesting enough to really set the space apart. White's home, I wanted to combine the rugged, simple style of the husband with the classic look that the wife loves. The nice thing about the master bedroom is it didn't need a ton of updating, but for this room, it was really a cosmetic change that we did. But again, we're talking about the blend of rustic and traditional. Two people, two different styles, but one room. We installed new hardwood floors in here. As you see, we have this really pretty, delicate chandelier. I think the chandelier just adds a really sweet, special touch to this room. It really makes it feel warm, cozy, inviting. Now, the husband really wanted a sliding barn door. I didn't beat it up too much. I left it pretty clean and simple, pretty stained. I mean, this is something that you can build. The rustic door and the chandelier and the headboard really balance each other out. 
Here in the bathroom, I think, is where you're really gonna see the biggest blend of both of them. You've got the marble backsplash, but the wood tile. You've got the marble countertops over here with the wood frame. So it's a really a blend of him and her. I really think this house was one of my favorites because it was blending two very different styles into one space and it worked. With summer finally here, I love to keep a picnic basket prepped and ready for whenever our family can get away for an afternoon. I start with a sturdy basket and line it with tea towels. Then I'll add plates, bowls, and cups. This enamel set is really durable but lightweight and helps dress things up. Next comes the flatware and the napkins. And that's it. When we're feeling spontaneous, all we have to do is pack something simple to eat. Hey everyone, I'm Joanna Gaines, and I'm gonna show you a few simple ways you can freshen up your tabletop for spring, and it only takes a few new pieces. I always start by layering in accent plates. I love these pieces from the new collection. Details like scalloped edges help elevate your table and make a statement while working within a simple color palette. I also like to switch out my table linens. If you only make one change, this is one that's really affordable and goes a long way to freshen things up. This table runner has just enough pattern to add some interest, and these napkins are the perfect touch of color for spring. Then I mix in serving dishes. These platters really help elevate the presentation. For your finishing touch, add a vase with a simple stem. I like something laid back but interesting like dogwood to give your table a little extra character. My favorite thing about this look is that it's simple enough for anyone to do, and it uses a mix of new elements for spring with pieces that you already have. For easy, affordable updates. Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Gaines, and today I'm going to show you how to style a desk for kids. I always like to start with storage. Getting rid of clutter helps kids focus and allow space for them to create. Office trays are great for papers, and baskets are my go-tos for gathering oversized crafts. Reading is a huge part of learning, and a library stamp is a cute idea to get kids excited about books. This curiosity shelf is a fun way to display some of their favorite things. I find that kids get creative on their own if they have all the right tools within reach. Crayons, pencils, washi tape, and paper. Lots and lots of paper. Chalkboards are great for drawing, plus you can leave notes for your kiddos. This one is also magnetic for hanging art. And don't forget the lighting. I love that this cage lamp adds an element of industrial design. To finish the space, I really like to incorporate pieces that are inspiring and invite hands-on learning, like these wall charts and positive sayings. One of my favorites is this desktop globe. It's a modern twist on a classic piece. This area is right off the kitchen, but you can create a space like this in a playroom, kid's bedroom, or a corner of your home office. 